Welcome to Optical Fiber Communication Playlist. I, Professor Ritesh Dolakia, is going to explain you DWDM network in this session. So this session is about dense wavelength division multiplexing. And to explain this session based on dense wavelength division multiplexing, these are my session outlines. Where in this session, first I'll explain you basics of DWDM. After that, I'll explain architecture of DWDM and then after I'll explain you necessity of DWDM network then we will see principle of working of DWDM network after that I'll explain you key components which is there with DWDM network and then after we will see different types of DWDM network which is available in the market and at the end, I'll sum up this session by explaining advantages of DWDM network. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of DWDM network. Now see DWDM means what? It is dense wavelength division multiplexing. So name itself indicates it is dense wavelength division multiplexing. Dense means there are wavelength which is very nearer to each other. So you will be finding in this type of network channel capacity is very high as there are more wavelengths which is sending signal from transmitter to receiver. So in dense wavelength division multiplexing wavelengths are very nearer to each other. It indicates there is higher capacity of network. So it gives you idea about channels are very nearer to each other in terms of wavelength. So they are very close to each other. So that indicates dense wavelength division multiplexing. Now to have dense wavelength division multiplexing, let us see the architecture step by step. So if you have transmitters, you can see T1 to Tn transmitters are there and each transmitter is assigned with individual wavelengths. Let us say those wavelengths are lambda 1 to lambda n. So those wavelengths that we first combine it by having multiplexer. So multiplexer is used to combine all those wavelengths from different transmitter and that we forward it on fiber. So here on this fiber you can see lambda 1 to lambda n number of wavelengths are there. So on fiber there will be composite signal of different wavelength that one can see. Right, so different transmitters are sending wavelength lambda 1 to lambda n that we combine it by having multiplexer and that signal is being forwarded on fiber and after that there can be OADM that is optical add drop multiplexer. Now see optical add drop multiplexer that is utilized to add any to add wavelength or to drop, drop wavelength in optical channel. Right, so in between somewhere there may be a need of connection of some users in that case we can use OADM where it will add channel or sometimes there can be receiver so we need to drop channel so OADM that is utilized to increase capacity of network where we can add and drop channel in between network and here one more element that one can see that is EDFA EDFA means Erbium Dobbed Fiber Amplifier and this Erbium Dobbed Fiber Amplifier that we are using it to increase transmission distance. See EDFA that is used to amplify the signal. So whatever signal that is coming on this fiber that can be amplified by using Erbium Dobbed Fiber Amplifier. This EDFA that is working with window of 1550 nanometer where it will amplify signal without having any extra cabling. So here for longer distance communication of optical fiber network there is a problem of attenuation and that attenuation issue that we can resolve by having EDFA. So this device that we are additionally using you might have seen my previous session based on WDM network right in that we were not been using this EDFA. Erbium dog fiber amplifier but this is additional device which we are using it to increase transmission distance and that we are using it to overcome issue of attenuation. So because of attenuation problem there, there 
there you cannot send signal for a longer distance as well as dispersion issue will get affected. So to overcome those issues, we are using Irbian Dobbed Fiber Amplifier. And after that, there can be demultiplexer which will separate all those wavelengths which is there in, on this fiber and those wavelengths can be connected to multiple receivers. You can see it over here. So the basic difference which is there in between DWDM and WDM network is we are using this additional device that is EDFA and OADM. So by using these two devices, we can increase communication distance as well as we can overcome issue of attenuation. And here our agenda is to provide dense wavelength division multiplexing. To have dense wavelength division multiplexing, it is so essential to have amplification uh, on optical fiber as signal is propagating for a longer distance, there will be attenuation and we need to remove that attenuation and for that we are using this and to increase capacity of channel in between network we need to use OADM. So this is about DWDM architecture. Now let us see the necessity of DWDM network. Now see in optical communication major issues are attenuation and dispersion. So these two issues are major issues which is resulting limitations of speed and distance of communication. So because of attenuation and dispersion, optical communication is having limitations of distance and speed and that we are over, that we overcome by having some additional elements which was there in WDM. So see by using EDFA, we can resolve issue of attenuation where we provide amplification. So EDFA is Irbium Dobbed Fiber Amplifier. I have made separate session based on EDFA. You can go through it. That gives you idea like how it amplifies the signal. This EDFA device that is functioning at 1550 nanometer wavelength and that is to amplify signal which will resolve issue of attenuation so that we can increase distance of communication. So here we have a, some other issues even but due to effect of bandwidth there is always compromise in between transmission distance and bandwidth. So if you increase distance there will be compromise in bandwidth and if you increase bandwidth there will be compromise in distance. So it is so essential to provide amplification in between network. Sometimes we can use regenerator but for regenerator we need to have extra cabling and extra electronic devices. So here by using EDFA we overcome that issue regarding regenerator. So it is highly required to use repeater at some distance in fiber system but we don't use repeater we use EDFA in DWDM network. EDFA increases capacity of DWDM network and in order to implement network with speed of 100 Gbps, it is highly required to have resolvement of some issues like attenuation and dispersion and there is a requirement of faster physical layer. So normal optical network cannot support such bandwidth for more than 500 meter distance. So if you have this much amount of speed by having optical network in that case you cannot have that bandwidth for more than 500 meter distance and if you increase distance for further than this in that case issues of attenuation and dispersion will create a problem and that we are resolving by having additional device like EDFA. So DWDM increases bandwidth and it supports more transmission distance without adding any extra cabling. Now let us see the working principle which is there with DWDM network. See DWDM network is functioning based on signal that is there with light, right? So DWDM divides light traveling through optical, optical cable into different wavelengths and DWDM takes input optical signal and divides into different wavelengths and those wavelengths are very near to each other. That's why it is dense wavelength division multiplexing. All these wavelengths are transmitted through same optical cable 
and DWDM selects wavelength in certain band only. And that band is there around 1550 nanometer. And this is what operating window of DWDM. And in DWDM network, we use EDFA, Irvium Dot Fiber Amplifier. And that Irvium Dot Fiber Amplifier, that is even functioning at the window of 1550 nanometer. So DWDM network increases the capabilities of existing optical network without adding any extra cabling. Thus, we can say DWDM, the different signal can travel in parallel as if they travel in dedicated lens where each lens is independent. So here each lens is independent, multiple lens are traveling in parallel and those traveling of distance is there in terms of kilometer without adding any extra cabling as well as without having any extra electronic devices like regenerator. So here we are using EDFA to overcome issue of attenuation and we are increasing capability of network by having dense wavelength division multiplexing. Now what are the key components which is there with DWDM network? So we have laser transmitters. See laser transmitters that is sending signal with higher efficiency compared to LEDs and by having laser transmitter we can send signal to longer distance compared to LEDs. So here our agenda is to increase distance communication that's why we are using laser transmitter. We have highly sensitive receiver why the reason is for a longer distance communication signal will be very weak. So that weak signal can be recovered only if we have highly sensitive receivers. So highly sensitive receivers is used in DWDM network, which will receive very weak signal. EDFA, as I have told you, Irbium Dot Fiber Amplifier, that is utilized to amplify signal on optical fiber. And this EDFA, I have explained already with separate session, which is working with operating window of 155 nanometer, 1550 nanometer wavelength and that is what the operating window of DWDM network. OADM optical add drop multiplexer that is to add and drop any wavelength in between network. We are using multiplexer that is to combine different wavelengths on a single fiber and we are using demultiplexer here that is to separate wavelengths which is there on optical fiber. So these are the key components which is there in DWDM network and by having it we can establish large capacity optical network which is having speed around 100 Gbps. Now how many types of DWDM networks are there? So DWDM network makes use of mesh, star or ring topologies. So these are the different topologies which is available with DWDM network. And when we talk about types, then there are basically two types. One is single hope network and second is multiple hope network. In single hope network, we are using same wavelength from transmitter to receiver. But in case of multi hope network, we use different wavelength from source to receiver. So in case of complicated routing, sometimes we need to change wavelength in between network. So here, multi-hope network that will increase capability even if single wavelength is not possible from transmitter to receiver. So in multiple hope network, we change wavelength of communication while if number of connection in between transmitter and receiver is less, in that case we can go for single hope network where same wavelength that we use it to send signal from source to receiver. Now let us have advantages of DWDM network. So see DWDM network is having higher bandwidth capacity of channel and using DWDM network it is possible to use signals with different data rates with different formats. So here we can scale formats even, we can scale data rate even and based on the need we can provide secured connection. Large amount of information can be transmitted simultaneously over a single fiber. So DWDM network that is all about higher data rate network. 
So these are the advantages which is there with DWDM network. I hope that you have understood this session and you can give your valuable suggestion. All this material which I am teaching here that you can download it from my application engineering funda. Definitely that will be beneficial to you to understand all those topics which I am teaching here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give your valuable suggestions and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.